Okay, so we are trenching a new yard drain through this yard, and you can see we've got a nice trench going. It's actually coming out here to a swell. Um, when this area rain, when it rains hard in this area, this floods up, and of course this is all going over to the St. Johns River. But what we need to do is we're going to actually attach a sump pump to this discharge as well as make it gravity with just a four inch line. We'll send it all the way back to the back. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. You're about to watch one of the easiest installs that you could ever do. Yes, it looks like it's really hard, but you can do this yourself and save so much money. This video is filled with so many tips of how to do this. And I promise you that you can do this yourself. It is not hard. Yes, there is a lot of labor involved, but if you really want to do do it yourself, this is a great video to learn. Be sure to check the description box below for more information. Kind of hard to tell. We've already, you know, I've already trenched this. It's just me out here, by the way. You can do this yourself. It takes a little bit longer. Probably take me about four hours altogether. But we're digging through grade. In other words, it is actually downhill to where, the, where you see the fence, and then beyond the fence is even more downhill. So we're digging deep, coming out here to the swell. Here's the swell, and you can see the culvert over here where the water goes away. But we've got to make our line try to go downhill or at least level. Um, the secret is you've got to be deeper here, right here, where you discharge them from where you start. It will work. It may work a little slow if you don't have that much fall. Um, if, you, if your line runs level, that's okay. It's still going to work. It might run just a little bit slow. But as long as you're higher where you start, then where you discharge, your system will work great. So I've already trenched through here. You can see there's quite a bit of tree roots down here. I've got to take the trenching shovel, come back, clean all this out, and try to get as deep as I can because I'm actually walking um, downhill right now back towards you know the back of the property. You can see I found the irrigation line. I pulled that out of the way. And right here where you see the all the excess soil, this is where I had to turn the trencher around. And so when you run your trencher, you've got to you come up to a dead end to a fence. You're going to have to turn it around and come back the other direction. It's going to pull all the soil back onto your trench where you just cut through. So you got to dig that out. It is real simple because it's already cut. Roots are all busted out. Everything should come out of there pretty quick. Um, you can see the depth that we want to be at is I've already started with my trenching shovel. You can see my foot down there. <laughs> it's down there. But this is a trenching shovel. And you need one of these if you're going to run a, a trencher because it's exactly the width of your trench. You can see it's six inches wide. The trencher cuts a six inch trench. Your bigger shovel, which I've got one over here, of course, your bigger shovel is eight inches wide. And <clears throat> I'll use that over here um, where we've got the excess soil from turning the trencher around, but then I'll still come back and use that little shovel to clean out so the trench. With your trenching shovel, <clears throat> normally I tell you to dig backwards, but we're cleaning the trench, so I'm going to actually go forwards and then come back through it again, but try to push your body weight, get down to the bottom of the trench where you put that trencher. Pull out that soil, just set it right beside the trench because you got to put it back in. And it takes a little while, but you know, it's not that hard to do. And now I'm getting here where I stopped and I'm starting again. So it's a lot of soil I'm pulling out and it's heavy and it is a tight fit. You can see I'm really pulling that soil up out of that trench, but you can do this. This is something that'll save you thousands of dollars, but just keep digging. Remember that trenching shovel is your key. And you see me getting stuck. Those are tree roots and the, they stop you from pulling that shovel out because the trencher didn't cut a very straight cut down through there. No trencher does. But keep coming and just kind of work it out. Once you get past the roots, it goes real quick. Very simple to do. <laughs> okay, remember how I said it's hard to get the trenching shovel out past the tree roots. You can see them in there. So if you have a pair of loppers, try to get as many as you can, but you got to be over as far to the side of the trench as possible. And 
this is a lot of extra work and it's kind of frustrating because they are tree roots, they're not limbs, they do come out. And it might help and it might not. You know, I mean, it's really one half of this and the other, but it's worth a try. I like to use them. And then you can see it comes right out if you've got the root cut to the side. If you don't, it's gonna be the same thing. You just wasted all that energy bending over and you wanna to try to save your back because this is you know intense labor. That's what you're paying for when you have somebody come out is really for labor. And labor is now very costly. You know, back in the 50s, 60s, or be before that even, labor was cheap. And today, it rivals the tech world. So, you know, be prepared if you're gonna pay somebody just to do this little 100 foot that I'm doing right here to the front fence, you're gonna spend anywhere from, I don't know, maybe 2,200 to 4,000 to get it done properly. So, if you can do it yourself, you can save quite a bit of money. But we're almost here to the end of the trench. I'm gonna cut a few more roots. You can see it's just hard to pull out that soil when those roots are sticking and stopping that shovel from coming up, even the little ones. But whoppers, they do help a little bit. Let me put that camera down a little bit more. Maybe you can see that better. Difficult to work inside the trench, but you can see I do get dirty. If you can see my knee, you'll see it in a second. I actually go ahead and get down in the dirt because you get more leverage. You can see my knee coming into the picture, but you know, I try to save my back because we do this every day. And I tell my guys that too. You know, don't be afraid to get dirty because if you're clean, I know you weren't working. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They work really hard, but get this out of there. You can see there's just a little bit of roots right there. It stops it from coming up and but we're almost there. Okay, okay, so now we're ready to connect the trench. There's a trench on the other side of the fence. Basically, I treat this just like a sidewalk and basically, you know, we want to scrape from the top. I take some of it out of here at the bottom so it's got a place to drop and there's some tree roots here, but we cut those off the sides and then you can scrape at the top so you can get down underneath and pull some out and it'll come right out whoops <laughs> sorry about that but it'll come right out <laughs> and you can see just a matter of seconds what stops you from tunneling under a sidewalk or anything is a tree root or a rock and the rocks really are tougher tree roots under a sidewalk they're pretty tough but i mean you can see i've gotten right through that trench that's a per perfect level. Let me pull this out. So there we go. We went right underneath of the fence. Get it down a little deeper. You can see we've connected our trench on the other side. That side's a little different than this side. I'll show you that in a little bit. But we've got a real nice trench. It goes all the way out to the swell out front. And we're ready to go ahead and put some catch basins in here and lay our pipe. We'll do that here in just a second. So over here on the other side of the trench, it's just been, this is kind of where they've been putting all their excess clippings and grass and stuff. So a little different, but once we get past that, you can see where the trencher is. And just behind the trencher is where the sump pump is. So we want to make sure that we can get number one, the discharge pipe, that inch and a half pipe. We're going to bury that as well. But we're also going to put a four inch gravity drain back there with a catch basin to help pick up the yard because it all slopes to that low spot right there behind the trencher. So that should help out as well. So a couple of quick notes, real quick, you know, to trench that line you know, with the trencher and then come back with the shovel took about 45 minutes altogether. So 15 minutes to trench, that goes pretty quick. And then about 30 minutes to come back with the shovel and clean it out to the proper depth. So that's all done. It, it is, you can see, I'm, I'm sweating. It's quite, quite humid. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to work, but keep your smile and, you know, just, just have fun with it. You'll save, think about it, you're saving thousands of dollars. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But really, it, it is not that hard of a, of a job to do. Second, um, real quick note about gravel, perforated pipe, and the geofabric, those type of things. My experience over 30 years is that, 
you know, in as we go further north, especially into clay country, I'm not a big fan of geofabric to wrap these things around. I have seen and found that systems last 10 to 15 years with or without fabric. So if you're going to do a French drain and you're using gravel surrounded, you know, your perforated pipe surrounded by gravel, it's really up to you. If you want to put fabric around it, fine. If you don't, fine. Just if you don't, make sure you put lots of gravel. And I really like to bring gravel up to grade so that it really picks up a lot more surface water and also it'll pick up that groundwater as it rises. The fabric, hey, it's up to you. I think that it slows down the system. Um, there are thinner fabrics. Of course, they don't last very long, <laughs> but it, the French drain life expectancy with or without gravel is about 15 years at the most. Um, somebody might say, well, yeah, you know, I dug one up that's 30 years old. Well, basically what that tells me is the system probably didn't function very well because otherwise that thing wouldn't be there. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's just a quick note about that. So here's our pipe where we came under the fence. You can see there's still some roots right here, but just pull it on through. Just get it out on this side of the trench and then you can work on it. I'm gonna lay the rest of the pipe on the other side. Yes, this is a long video, but hopefully you learned all the tips that I'm showing you. And I promise you that you can save thousands of dollars by doing this yourself. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the new channel, French Drain Science. Link is in the description box below. Okay. Okay, I'm stopping here to show you. There's still some big roots that are going to stop me from pushing this pipe down. And I can force it around those roots or I can take those loppers and I can cut that root off. Better to use the loppers, that way it doesn't crush your pipe. So let's do that. Okay, you can see that great big root, and try to do this with one hand, I don't think I can. Well, that one I might be able to get past it, okay good. But basically, you know, you want to, don't want to push it past these great big roots. Smaller ones, not too much of a big deal, you can push it down in there, hit the bottom of the trench. Real important that you get down on the bottom, because you're going to lose your fall as you go through here. You can see a little bump here. Let's see what's going on. I'll bet you it's just a tree root. Yep. So we can push it straight down onto the trench. Down there where you see it coming up, there's a big root right there. I know I've got to cut a couple of them. But we've got real good fall going back that direction. And we want to keep that fall as we go all the way out the front. Here's a great tip if you've got a few pieces of extra pipe, you've already you know cut pieces off. Don't waste your pipe. Don't throw it away. You can definitely put a coupling on here. This is an exterior coupling. In other words, it snaps onto the exterior. These are about $2.50. But if you don't have any and you don't want to make another trip to Lowe's or wherever Home Depot carries those, what you can do is cut off about six inches of pipe. Just watch. Six inches of pipe. Go ahead and slice it right down the middle. What we're going to do is make an interior coupling. So we're going to squish this together real tight. And then we insert it into one side about half ways. Then we can take the next piece, squeeze it again tight because it's hard to fit it, and twist until it comes together all the way. Sometimes you need a little body weight. There we go. That what that did was it expanded inside the pipe, you know, the little ridges. This is solid, but I always put a couple of set screws in there. These are three quarter inch with a five sixteenths inch nut driver, but I just want to hold them in place. That way I know they won't come apart. The amount of water that might leak out of here is so insignificant. As long as it's you know got downhill flow, it's so insignificant. It, the system's not designed to be watertight. This is a great way to adapt for the do-it-yourselfer, save yourself 250, but more than that, you save an hour of time of going, if you've run out of these, this coupling, um, in time, an hour in time to go to the store and back. So anyways, a real great little tip if, if you don't have a coupling. So back here in the backyard, you know, we had a real good downpour and you can see there's a, a catch basin right here in their little driveway and there's more catch basins and perforated pipe that run across the yard. It's gathering all the water and basically we sent it over here to a sump basin. Um, they got an RV parked back here, but 
come back around and you can see, you can hear it, it's just pouring into the sump basin. And temporary discharge lines on top of the ground that sends it out front. Let's go around front there and see if we've got any flow. It's only kicked on a couple of times here, but we may have a flow. It's a lot of water to fill up that four inch pipe. You know, so it temporarily, you can hear it kicked on. Temporarily, I just stuck it into the discharge and it's, you know, this pipe's carrying it on out to the swell. Let's walk out there and take a look, see if we have a flow of water out there. So yeah, I can see it from here. It filled up the trench. Just need a little bit more of a discharge, dig that out. But water's come all the way out. And remember, this pipe's down underneath of there, but you can see once we dig this out a little bit, it'll come out. And you don't even need to do that, but we want to make sure that water does get out all the way out. So the system works really good. And once we bury it, um, they shouldn't have any more problems. A couple of quick things. You can definitely, you know, these rural properties, you can definitely dig a swale along the side of the property just like this. I mean, same kind of thing. You know, dig a swale, you can see it over there, how it comes down, and you can mow it. But of course, when it floods, you can't mow it. Um, you can definitely do that on your property. I think it's a much neater install if you put pipe underground. Um, that way, you're assured that water is going to come out and you don't need to do any type of landscaping or anything. If you did a swale, you might want to put some river rock in there. Just more cost. And also to excavate it, you're going to need a pretty good excavating machine, mini excavator or a small backhoe, to, to create your swale. you got to get it down pretty deep in order for that system to work and flow out of there. But basically, if you give water a place to go, it will go there. So I just walked around front there to show you the discharge and came back here to check the catch basin. You can see all the water's gone, even with it all clogged up. It really works great. Um, catch basin's taken all that water away and it went over to the sump basin, like I said. Works really good. You know, water may back up for a few minutes, but if you give it a place to go, especially with a pump, it's going to take it out of here and you're going to be real happy with your results. Okay, so the rain has passed, and of course now it's really hot and humid, but starting to backfill. And this is really the hardest part because it's wet now, but you just use your rake and push it back on the top. You can see my rake down here. I went ahead and added um, some more pipe. We're deep enough to do so. And I also added a, a low voltage landscape wire for them so that they could have some lighting out front there. And basically what this is, this is three inch pipe, and then there's inch and a half pipe, and there's a connection there. I've showed you that donut many times. We're deep enough to put this inch and a half in here, and the reason why is that from that back sump pump out to the front, it is truly uphill. And even if I went down another six inches, it won't matter, it's still uphill all the way out there. So we're gonna go ahead and pump that water through the inch and a half and give them about 30 feet of three inch so that it kind of relieves that pressure. There's a good fall from there out to the swell. That'll work good. Luckily, we're deep enough to do both. We're still going to use the gravity drain and put a couple of catch basins in here, um, not on this side of the fence, but on the other side. You can see the catch basin there, but we'll put those on the other side of the fence because over here, it's still very low and it's a long ways back to that sump basin back there. So along this section here that's been trenched, we're going to put in some catch basins and a French drain to help collect that water that lays in this section of the yard. It does travel, you know, all the way back to the sump pump back there, but um, we can pick some of that up and this will discharge from here. But we're going to keep it under pressure with the inch and a half pipe as it goes out all the way out to the front. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drain. To remind you that if you believe you can do some of this, I guarantee you. Have a great day. Nash and Joe with the Tampa Drain Dudes. We are incredibly excited to announce that we are now partnered with Apple Drains. And what that means 
is that we are going to be taking over all of their clientele in this Tampa Bay area, which also includes... We're going to go as far north as Brooksville. We're going to go as far east as Lakeland and south as South Tampa, St. Petersburg area. If the job is the right size and we really need to help our clients out, we'll go a little bit more north, a little bit more east, and a little bit more south, just depending on what you guys' needs are. Joe, you got anything to add? We're gonna cover all exterior drainage that you may need, French drains, sump pumps, channel drains, gutter downspout redirection, all that good stuff. So check us out, tampadraindudes.com. We are incredibly happy and thankful for this experience to partner with Chuck from Apple Drains. And we look forward to this relationship. All right, guys, remember, Tampa Drain Dudes are simply smarter at diverting water. Y'all take care.